Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm trying a different method of streaming. So this is either going to be good or horribly bad. Um, I'm got, I got my chat up on here just in case. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to I just going to be playing some uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and I'm probably not going to be good at it because the last time I played it I was pretty terrible at it. And sorry, I'm just checking out some stuff here on my computer. Feel free to. Just sit there and wait. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Too much crap on my computer. I hate that. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and hopefully it's going to work. And let's see if this method of streaming is better, because I've been trying streaming before, and uh, I was using Google Hangouts. I was sharing my screen. I was doing this whole terrible way of doing it, and a few a few people have. Uh, my volume is really loud. A few people have suggested some things to me and trying to make it better, and so I'm still working on it. Hopefully, I can get this to a, a down to a science and I can actually stream properly and doesn't look like crap. Uh, right now, I'm just adjusting my volume. Again, this is all me working out my uh, way of actually playing it. And I'm going to be trying to monitor the chat too, so if you're out there on the chat, uh, feel free to throw some stuff at me. Sorry about that. I'm still working on it. Hopefully I can get... Oh, okay, so it looks like I have uh, Lurch M there. Uh, how are you? I'm doing good. And I have uh, Billy O. Uh, good pick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to gonna lose badly, but um, I don't know. We'll, we'll just see what happens here. Uh, the only thing I was kind of worried about is my uh, my internet service right now is, is kind of going in and out. So hopefully I don't uh, I don't get lost here. Yeah. All right. Let's play some punch out. Okay. The glass show. <laughs> uh, you should be able to beat this guy, no problem. I don't know why I would have any problem here. It's really just mastering the, uh, what is it, the uppercut? This guy barely ever hits you anyways. You know what I got here? There we go. He's going down. I remember always being good at this one oh, a long time ago anyways. Um, and then when I got Super Punch Out, uh, yeah, I met my match on that one. That, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The guy who does, like, the, uh, pretty much comes out and does karate on you. This guy's nuts. Let's do it. I think the last time I tried playing this game, the furthest I got was... Maybe Ball Bull. That's how out of shape I am with this. Keep in mind, for those in the chat, um... Like I said in the beginning, if you didn't catch up or didn't burn in at that time, um, I'm trying a new software for streaming, and hopefully it's actually uh, streaming properly this time. Hey Ben Moore, how you doing? Benny Vegas from Facebook. And Atari Dude's here. How's it going, Atari Dude? Oh, this guy. I hope I don't get owned. Not on the second guy. That's why I love Nintendo. You put it down for a long time, then you pick it up, and then you crap at it again. It takes it back to when you used to rent these games. You'd be horrible at it. Well, he's got an uppercut. There you go. Knock him out. Alright, there we go. Whoa. Just keep 
doing until he falls over. about this game is it's boxing in a simplified way. They don't try to overcomplicate it. You just kind of learn everybody's different uh, different special moves, I guess you want to call it. Okay, Piston Honda. This guy, I either get him right away or he takes me all the way down to like the third round, the, the third, almost third knockout. Used to rent N64 games. Ah, I haven't actually, uh, I mean, the only time I rented video games was way back in the day when it was just Nintendo. <laughs> and that was, that was kind of cool when they came up with that. I mean, it was, it was strange going into a video rental store. Okay, gotta get it right. There we go. It was strange going into a video rental store and seeing video games there that you could rent. Even you could rent a Nintendo if you didn't have one. Ben Moore wants to know how old I am. <laughs> well, let's just say I'm, uh, pretty old. I'm about 41, I guess. <laughs> Probably too old to be playing video games, right? I don't know. Uh oh. Okay. Got him! I'd say the, the main problem with renting a lot of the video games, especially the later ones where games started getting longer and more complex, you couldn't finish them. So you'd rent it, and then you'd have to get it back, and you'd have to like... Rent it again. Oh good. Okay, there's some people over than me. Good. I don't feel so bad now. You can keep on, you know, you'd have to keep on renting the same game. As, well, maybe it was okay in, in like the PlayStation days, because if, uh, if they even rented out PlayStation games, I, I don't remember. But so you'd be able to have your uh, memory card and stuff that you can save on. But uh, when you rented a Nintendo game, say you rented Legend of Zelda or Dragon Warrior. Oh no. And you didn't finish it in time. You had to get the game back, and chances are when you rented it again, who knows if your save state would even be there. Chances are the next person that rented it would take that save state away. Looks like we got a bunch of uh, people around my age, that's good. Now, today I was actually debating for my first trial with this new uh, software that I'm using. Um, I was debating on this game or Pitfall 2 for the Atari 2600. So I thought that would be a nice lengthy game to <laughs> give a shot. Maybe I'll do that one uh, you know, next time I do a stream. I always loved Pitfall 2. In fact, I, I actually started playing it on the uh, Commodore 64 when I was a kid. Um, that was my first experience with it. Yay, Mac! Well, looks like we got nostalgic for the 70s and 80s. How's it going? Is this where he's doing his little jog? Yes. Sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery. Have a drink. Why did I wear pink, anyways? Hmm. Guess it's his uh, power workout suit. Fast key is. Okay, I don't care about that. Oh yes, this guy, Don Flamenco. 
Yeah, my voice probably does sound like it's in a subway tunnel. Uh, I do need to get a microphone. I'm still using my uh, webcam. So, unfortunately. One of these days, slowly. Lots of echoing in my voice. That's not good. Hopefully I'll be able to get a good microphone soon. Hopefully the streaming is good though. Uh, if you've ever watched any of my streaming videos, the uh, video games were very choppy. And that was because I used, um, I was just using Google Hangouts and I was just sharing my screen. And the frame rates were just horrible. It couldn't capture the video game's frame rates out. So, that would be why if you watch any of my other live streams, they were pretty crappy. Hopefully this one's good. I mean, I did a test beforehand. And it seemed to work. But this is my first actual live stream of it, so. Let's see if I can beat this guy before he beats me. Well, according to Ben, it's uh, my streaming is excellent. Perfect. I've been trying to get this to work for a while now, it just it was bothering me I couldn't get this to work. Uh, a few YouTubers actually step in and give me some advice. Found a few uh, few websites on it. The software I'm using is called OBS, or o I think it's Open Broadcast Studio. I think that's what it's called. It's like a free sir. It's a free streaming, or well, it's designed for this type of stuff. You can actually do like share your screens and all other stuff and. And I can put graphics in there, make it look a little bit better than what I used to use before, where it was just showing my screen. What do I have to do on this guy again? I have to wait till he, like, opens his mouth and then I punch him, right? And then I punch his belly. What's a factory sealed Tyson's punch out go for these days? That's a good question. I don't see too many uh, factory sealed classic Nintendo games anymore. And when you do, usually people want a lot of money for it. Ow. This hippo guy, come on. Anybody ever watched Captain N? I think that was what it was called, Captain N. It was like a Nintendo show back in the 80s, 86 probably, when, when Nintendo came out. And one of the characters in there was uh, King Hippo. Also had the uh, eggplant guy, plant wizard, I think, from Kid Icarus. Man, that game is hard. <laughs> So far, I've, I haven't been brave enough to try that one again. I, mean, I think when I used to play Kid Icarus, I used to use a, a, a code where you can get uh, everything. You just put in a, a code at the beginning and it gives you everything. And then you can just complete the game. Ow. I don't like this guy. He's hard. He's punching me hard. Captain N came out back in when when Saturday morning cartoons were still a thing. They're not anymore. I mean, I still I, I get up on Saturday mornings and I flip through the channels. I don't see any cartoons. I see infomercials and church things and sitcoms and talk shows and news. But where's the cartoons? Uh oh, this ain't good. Isn't good at all. Come on, get up, get up. Stupid knockoff controller. Woo. Okay, I 
think I, if I hold down select, I get my power back, right? Yeah, times have changed big time. I think the idea is that you can, uh... You can get all these cartoons now on YouTube and... Whatever, Netflix. So they're probably like, why put it on syndicated TV? Alright, that's how you beat this guy. Well, also, the, the cartoons they have today, they don't feel like cartoons anymore. They, they go too much for the realism. Like, they all look like video games almost. Like, Xbox games. Wrestling, yeah, I remember watching uh, WrestleMania and Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestle. If anybody remembers that, the cartoon had Hulk Hogan, Rowdy Roddy, right, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Iron Sheik, I think was in that one, Nikolai Volkov, all the classic great WWF superstars of the day. Unfortunately, a lot of them are gone now. A lot of them are have passed away. We've lost so many great wrestlers. Macho Man, I know. That sucked. I remember when I read that. When when uh, he died, that, that was just horrible. Ultimate Warrior. I mean, so many great, uh, so many great people. <laughs> oh yeah. Bald Bull. Okay, now I'm in trouble. I think this was the first I've made it in a long time, and I know this guy is a beast. Uh, shouldn't have tried that uppercut. I always love this guy, his eyes look like they're spinning around like a slot machine. I moved out of the way. It's that bull charge he does. It's like the timing on that. Oops. 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 <laughs> Gosh. Unfortunately, I'm playing this on an emulator. And, uh,. If anybody knows emulators very well, they know that they're not as responsive as uh, playing it on the real thing. Rex Warden says, he's only met Mr. T. You've met Mr. T? Get out of here. The Mr. T? The Baracus? I think the last time I saw- oh, jeez. Last time I saw Mr. T was, uh, he was doing some clip show, or, or what was it, a, a video fail show, YouTube type of thing, where he showed videos and he called it Pity the Fool or something. That was horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloat. That's okay. Back to this guy again. Oh yeah, the A-Team. I watched the A-Team lots of times. Oops. They just don't make those shows anymore. Oh jeez, my timing's off. Even though they make these movies, like, they made an 18 movie and it was like, you know, just didn't cut it.
Oh, that's cool. So he was, uh, he was at a store handing out stuff. I remember the Ultimate Warrior was supposed to be at a sports store, and my father took my friend and I to go see him, and he wasn't able to make it. it really sucked. They still handed out the posters, though. I remember my father said, he's, he, oh, I'm taking you to see a wrestler. I'm like, okay. He, he didn't even tell me who it was. And uh, when we got there, uh, it was the ultimate, it was supposed to be the ultimate warrior. And I was so excited. I'm like, oh, yeah. But I don't know what happened, but he couldn't make it. it really sucked. I'm sure that poster I got is long gone. Now. Never actually, uh, I don't think I've ever been to a WWF. I'm trying to remember now if I've actually been to one. Ouch. My timing's off. Okay, there we go. I know this guy has like little tells, like you can watch the uh, the jewel or whatever it is on his turban. And if it blinks, you can punch him at that point or something. You know he's about to do it. Oh yeah, Maple Leaf Gardens. You know, I, 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 I might have actually been to one of them. I, I can't remember now. It's really weird. Maple Leaf Gardens used to be where the Toronto Maple Leafs played. Now that uh, that place is uh, all... Well, I, I don't know if they actually tore down the building or what. Or, didn't it, I think it became a grocery store or something. Kind of a shame. I never got to see the Leafs there. I mean, by the time I got to see the Leafs, they were already at the uh, Air Canada thing. Title match. <laughs> so I hold the distinction of being a member of the exclusive club, The Fools, that Mr. T took pity on. Yeah. So Rex, Rex Warden, he, he said he fell down and Mr. T actually uh, helped him or helped him up, asked him if he was okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat this guy. I think back in back in the old you know back in the Nintendo days, I used to play these games like over and over again until I got really good and you can actually beat it before I move on to another game. I mean, it's hard to find the time to do that nowadays. I think my problem is I can never uh, time the uh, the bull charge. I always just miss them. Battle of the planets like song. Oh. Oh, uh, here we go. Come on, we can do it. Got him! Take that. So Atari dude saying he's from Australia. I actually know a few people now from Australia. That's pretty cool. And I did uh, I did a podcast with uh, Sid Spacey's. And he's uh, he's a YouTuber in Australia. Let's do it again, come on. Yay! Yes, Atari 5200 Central. 
Uh, he's, uh, Toronto. I'm not too far from there. <laughs> Back to running! Now, who do I have to face again? Ah, oh, no. Is it, uh... It's been a while since I've actually made it this far. <laughs> Brian will be doing an episode about 2600. Are you talking about, uh, me? Or Brian from Sim Spaces. <laughs> I think you're talking about me. It was funny when I did my uh, when I did a podcast with Sim Spaces. Uh, his name's also Brian, so it got confusing. All right, let's see if I can do this. Oh yes, yes. Sorry. 5200 is also known uh, known as Nostalgia for the 70s and 80s. He's got a few handles. I find that there's a few people, they have uh, Facebook handles that are different from their YouTube handles that are different from their Twitter handles and so on. I almost have to start writing this down. Uh oh. Oh no! I'm being owned by Piston Honda now. Rex is saying his only other celebrity running was emailing Bruce Campbell. Ow, ow. Ow. I'm not gonna go Oh no, I'm not gonna make it come up. Oh, I died. Fell over. Yeah, it's cool when you get to meet celebrities. I haven't met too many celebrities in my time. Okay, let's give this guy a shot. Let's do this. Stick and move, stick and move. <laughs> oh, ow. Ow. Okay, at least I got him in. Did I get him? Totally was not expecting that. Totally was not expecting that. I thought he was going to own me. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Not Soto Popinski. Okay. Now, if I'm, if I'm correct, in the original Poncho, maybe on the Japanese one or something, wasn't he actually drinking beer? Then they just turned it into pop for the American audience. Am I wrong on that one? I don't know if anybody else knows that. This is Atari 5200 Central saying, We will be doing live streams also. Brian should be one of the shows so you can talk about 5200 with you. Yes, I would like to talk about the Atari 5200 because I know very little about the 5200. <laughs> Vodka drunk, good ski. That'd be fun. See how quickly this guy owns me. Seriously, I didn't think I'd be getting this far. I thought I was gonna lose a bald bull. This guy's yeah. I mean he's not he's not as crazy as Super Macho Man with that flying spin kit thing. Or spin punch or whatever it is he does. Ow. He's advancing, he's advancing. Okay. Stop laughing at me. You suck. Ow. 
Am I out? No. Might as well be. Barely getting up. Maybe I should have wrote down the code. Never hurts to get some extra practice. Just waiting for him to do something, but I just remember he usually doesn't do anything. He just stands there. Just let's just punch him. Uh, I missed the timing on that. You should have been down. That's you know, too bad, you know. Yeah, that was a good run. That's too bad that uh, you can't really capture your score on this game. Like, it doesn't really have a scoring. Like, it's got the points there. Yeah, I got like 1250 points. But then it kind of resets and stuff. Like, it's, it doesn't really keep your points. I can't really do a high score challenge on this game. You know, back on, on my Facebook group, uh, I have a Facebook group called uh, Retro Gaming and Retro Toys, and we were doing a uh, high score challenge. At least we started it a few months before Christmas, and uh, I was asking people what games do you want to do, and uh, we ended up doing like some Super Mario Brothers games and stuff like that, and Castlevania, and a lot of people wanted to do Punch Out, but I'm like, there, there really is no easy way to like do the point system. They, they kind of reset. So, and I was thinking, well, you know, maybe it's how far can you get? But even that's kind of weird. Long Kaiser. Uh, Atari 5200 Central, you're asking if I will get dinged by playing Nintendo gameplay. I don't know, I'm not monetizing this. I mean, I pretty much gave up on the whole monetization thing now because of YouTube's new uh, monetization limits and stuff like that. So, it almost doesn't make any sense because I'll never hit that threshold uh, they gave us till the end of February or February 20 to get up to about a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time, which is like insane. I mean, unless I'm that, you know, what's this guy, that Logan Paul guy, and I can go into the woods and film a dead body and get a billion hits, like, no way. I'm, I'm never gonna get there, so what's the point in monetizing? I, I've been working on, or I've been monetizing my thing. And, uh, my, my videos for a while, and I only have, like, for about a year and a half, I've only made about 27 bucks. <laughs> and they don't let you claim that money until you hit 100. So, for me to hit 100 bucks in YouTube, that's gonna be another year, two years of me just constantly throwing out videos. And, uh, they even kept throwing out these other things of, uh, you know, this video is not qualified to make money off of ad revenue. Yeah, they've kind of boycotted. So I don't know if, if Nintendo, if the thing's going to care, because I'm not monetizing it, I'm not trying to make any money off of this. And if they do, if they do give me a copyright claim, whatever, I'm going to know. I mean, I got the copyright claim when I did a Mario 3, I got it when I did Mario 2. <laughs> I got a few other copyright. I got a copyright claim on um, a Jack specific uh, plug and play 
thing I did. It was the uh, Miss Pac-Man plug-and-play. Got a copyright claim on that one, which I thought was really bizarre. And out of the blue, I also got another one on the Transformers Age of Extinction, I think it was? Trailer response video? Really strange. Like, um, yeah, I think it was... It, was it the age of... whatever the last... maybe no, it was the last night, sorry, the last night. The, uh, the last Transformer movie that came out, the last night, I did a trailer reaction video when they first released the trailer. And I just talked about the movie, or, well not the movie, but the trailer itself. And I showed a few clips from the trailer. I didn't actually play the video, I just showed a few clips from it, like screenshots. And a year later, I got this, uh, copyright claim. <laughs> I thought, that's kind of funny. You know, it's like a year later, nobody's going to watch that anymore. Nobody's going to care about it, because it's it's a reaction to the trailer. The movie's been out now for a while. Who gives a crap? But uh, I guess, you know, someone manually found it and was like, oh. So who knows, maybe Nintendo will pick on with this. Whatever. If they do, I'll say good day, sir. Yeah, 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 champion. <laughs> so Atari 5200 Central saying he only got a Wii for Netflix. <laughs> now we playing some modic. Uh, yeah, that's funny. I have a Wii too, and uh... I mean, I bought it because I really enjoyed the uh, the, the Wii Sports. I, I think that's all I wanted it for, was playing Wii Bowling and, uh, you know, tennis and all, all the Wii Sports. I bought a few games for my Wii. Uh, I bought Back to the Future. I'm, oh yeah, I'm wearing a shirt. Big Back to the Future fan. So I bought the Back to the Future game for the Wii, which was interesting because I didn't even know it existed until I walked by it in Toys R Us. and. It was the only one sitting there on the shelf, and I, I was like, what is this? And I bought it right away, because it was Back to the Future and just for the Wii. That was fun. And, uh, you know, I downloaded, a few, I downloaded the, uh, the Super Mario Bros. 2, which is the actual, oops, the actual Super Mario Bros. 2, not the uh, Doki Doki Panic version that we got here in North America. I, bought, I downloaded the actual Super Mario Bros. 2 that was supposed to be released. And it's hard. I mean, really hard. Um, it was on the uh, Super Mario All-Stars. And for whatever reason, I found it to be not as, or much harder than the version on the All-Stars. Maybe the All-Stars version, uh, was a little watered down. Maybe they, they didn't make it so hard. <laughs> Sofa King Amazing says, uh, Hi, I love beating stuff. <laughs> Especially this game. It's a great game to take your aggression out. If you come home from work and you're pissed off at your boss or you're pissed off at a co-worker, put in punch it. Punch face. Also, uh, other than homebrew for the 2600 and 5200, uses, uh, uses a harmony card. Yeah, that makes sense. So, nostalgic for the 70s and 80s, which is also, I think, uh, Atari 5200 guy. <laughs> uh, he's talking about the harmony card. I don't have one of those yet. I need to get whoops. I need to get one. I keep hearing about them. Actually, I should get the uh, I should get the one that's for the Intellivision. Actually, I don't think it's called Harmony Card, but there, there is one for the Intellivision where you can load in uh, games on there and play them on your original Intellivision system. Because there's so many great uh, homebrew games that came out for the Intellivision.
course, I'd probably spend most of the time playing uh, D2K because I love Donkey Kong. Why is King Hippo beating the crap out of me right now? I went the distance with King Hippo. Yes, that's right. In television is LTO Flash. You see, I was trying to look at the difference, like, if I were to buy, uh, the, uh, the Flash card, or just buy the Donkey Kong game. Fortunately, the, they're both the same price. I mean, the D2K Special Edition or whatever it was, it's like a hundred bucks. Um, whereas I can buy the Flash card, and I have the ROM, because the, uh, programmer, um, he sent it to me, because he wanted me to do a video on it. So, I did my video, I did two videos on it actually, because I had so much fun with it. And it would make more sense for me to actually buy a Harmony cart and load the ROM onto it, and then just play that on the Intellivision. I think the thing that was kind of holding me back from the LTO flash cart for the Intellivision, it was that I pretty much have all the Intellivision games that I want. But I wasn't considering the... Um, the homebrews. So, okay, back to this guy again. Yes, Miss Pac-Man too. Yeah, uh, I talked to him about that a few times. He mentioned that that he did uh, a Miss Pac-Man game, and um, I uh, downloaded it and I tried it out. It's actually pretty good. I was trying to convince him to do a live chat, but uh, he's not too comfortable in front of the camera, unfortunately. So he said uh, he's happy to answer any questions, and but uh, yeah, I understand that. I mean, not everybody's comfortable in front of the camera or doing interviews and stuff. Whoops. I'm always looking for new people to do my live chat with. Got a bunch of people that I still have in mind. Oh no, I'm out of breath. I'm tired. One more hit. Two more hits. You can buy the rounds for PT. Yep. considered buying a flash card for the uh, Atari. Um, I was really close to like really considering it. <laughs> uh, but again, I think I have like most of the Atari games I want. The only ones I'd be interested in would maybe be some of the proto or not prototypes, but the uh, homebrews. Like there's Halo for the Atari. Halo 2000. But at the same time I can just emulate it on my computer with Stella, so yeah. When it comes to like Atari, I like the, the feel of the you know the real joystick, the real oops, the real cartridge and all that stuff. And uh, you know, if, if there's a homebrew that comes out, in fact, the, the the one homebrew that well, there's been a couple of homebrews that I've really been thinking about picking up. One is called, what's it, Al Altair or something like that? Uh, it's almost like a Zelda game. I think it's called Altair. And the other one is uh, Blinky Goes Up, which I've done a live cast on, or a live play. Uh, I'm going down, alright. Oh no. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, he, he didn't even, he didn't even try to get up. He was, he was down to the count. And I thought everything was, uh, you know, perfect because I have the uh, Atari Flashback Portable. And that has a little SD card and you can put ROMs on there. Unfortunately for the, um, the Flashback Portable, not all games work on it. So, 
I mean, you can't get Pitfall 2 to work on it. You couldn't get Berserk to work on it either, which is a popular Atari 2600 game as well. Uh, and then someone made like a patch or something, or a, a fixed version of it. And... Princess Rescue. Yes. That's a game that I wish I had an original of. <laughs> that, and for those who don't know what Princess Rescue is, it is Super Mario Brothers on the Atari 2600. Obviously labeled Princess Rescue because of, you know, copyright reasons. Punch him. Whew! That was close. Oh, you had to pay you had to pay two hundred and fifty dollars complete in box for it. For Princess Rescue or what for which game? Can you catch that? I have Princess Rescue on the emulator, but I don't I mean it does work on the uh it does work on the Flashback Portable, and I did a video a while ago called Mario on Atari, and I did show it in there. Um, and I was using my Flashback Portable. The problem is with the Flashback Portable is it doesn't work properly. Um, you can't run, I believe it is, and you can't shoot the fireballs. But when I played it on my... Uh, my, uh, on Stella on the computer, I could do all that. So, I don't know, I guess it's just a coding issue. For whatever reason, it doesn't work on the... I, th I think there's a few games that just don't work on the flashback portal. saying he prefers the original hardware, but he's not concerned with the original carts. So, yeah, you can use the Harmony card or whatever, the Flash card, or whatever they want to call it for each system. I mean, there's, there's one for uh, Nintendo as well. For Sonic fans, there's Zippy on the 26th. Did I do a video on Zippy yet? I don't think I did. I think I'm due for that one. <laughs> I don't know if I actually did a video. I know I did a video where I played Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, so Zippy, Zippy the Porcupine is a homebrew for the Atari 2600. You can actually buy that off Atari Age, off their store. I think it's still for sale. And it's, uh, it's pretty much Sonic the Hedgehog on the Atari 2600. Only instead of a hedgehog, he's a porcupine. It's actually pretty decent and pretty surprising to see games like that actually manifest on something like the Atari. To actually see these games, like I was blown away when I saw Princess Rescue for the Atari 2600. Now obviously these games would have never existed back in the, in the day, I mean the programmers themselves, they didn't, they had limited time constraints, games like Super Mario Bros. didn't exist. Some of them had to really fight hard to try and get better RAM carts. Or ROM carts, or whatever they call them. Ugh. Just beat me 
growing up. Because they, they were limited in memory and space and all that other crap. And uh, this is why a lot of uh, older Atari games were very uh, simple. Because they, they just didn't have the memory space to contain all the coding. In fact, I remember, I think it was a video or something on YouTube I was watching, and David Crane, the guy who made uh, Pitfall for the Atari, was talking about how um, he required a bigger cartridge, uh, so, uh, well not a bigger cartridge, but more space on the cartridge, and they didn't give it to him. I think, what was it, the 4, 4K or whatever they gave, the measurements they gave him. And uh, he needed it to be bigger and make more memory, more space, and they wouldn't give it to him. And he had to keep figuring out how to uh, kind of truncate the code down and still keep the game the way it was. And he had to kind of you know, find shortcuts and stuff. And it was kind of interesting. Like, I mean, spent a lot of time trying to just get the game to fit on the cartridge itself. It didn't seem that way, I guess, for Pitfall 2. He seemed to have much more. Oh, wiggle room on that one. Plus it had like a special sound chip in the Oh no no no. Oh no 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 no. Oh no. Oh. Is this game over again? <sighs> nope. Alright. Yeah, working within limitations is a lost art. That's for sure. I mean, these programmers had limited times, they had limited space on their cartridges, limited memories. I mean, today the sky's the limit with these homebrews, right? They can make a game as big as they want it and just make it a ROM and say, here you go, put it on a flash card. They can make brilliant, brilliant Atari 2600 look games that could have never existed back in 83. Mind you, there, there were some that actually did hit the shelves that were quite impressive. Secret Quest comes to mind. I was kind of impressed by that. Dark Chambers. There, there was a few that actually... Uh, Desert Falcon. A few Atari 2600 uh, carts that hit the, hit the market and were actually pretty decent. Of course, Activision, well, most of the Activision games were, you know, you bought an Activision title, you almost were sure you were getting a good game. I mean, it had a few odd titles, like Space Shuttle, not really a game for everyone. Dragster, hard as heck. Oh. Yeah, I believe that too. Uh, Nostalgic saying that uh, games, uh, modern games coding is kind of sloppy. It's true because they can just create patches and stuff. They can put out a game on Switch or whatever and be like, oh, we made a mistake or we didn't do this properly, here's a patch. They couldn't do that back in the day. They sold the cartridge. All they could do is remanufacture the cartridge and then sell it again and say, oh, we fixed it, now here, here's another cartridge. But they couldn't send you a patch. And you know what game comes to mind when I'm thinking of this? Impossible Mission on the Atari 7800. <laughs> I was so disappointed to learn that that game is broken. And it was broken from the day it was released. Um, you cannot complete the game. And it's funny because it fits with the title, Impossible Mission, because it's actually an impossible mission. And I was really disappointed because when I bought my Atari 7800, I found it on eBay. Um, somebody was selling it with a bunch of games, and Impossible Mission was one of them. And I only played Impossible Mission on the Commodore 64. And I played it a lot as a kid. I can still play it well today, I'm still good at it, um, but I was so excited to know that I was getting a possible mission for the Atari 7800, and then I found out afterwards that you can't even beat the game, and I was like, what are you talking about, you know? And people were explaining that to me, that it's kind of like a bug or something, like a mess up in the coding, 
where uh, if you've ever played Impossible Mission, uh, you have to search pieces of furniture and stuff and look for pieces of the puzzles. And uh, eventually you put these puzzle pieces together, you get a code word or a code letter, and then you spell it a word, and then you can enter the secret room and win the game. Now what happened is, the um, whatever the bug was, it would put some of the pieces behind things like uh, terminal computers, which cannot be searched. So you cannot get that piece. And so you can never complete the game. It's just impossible. And uh, they did correct it. Actually, uh, I'm seeing that now there too. I was going to say that. They, they did correct it with the PAL version, and I've heard that. So, I mean, and I, I think there's also a... A version that was kind of released after the fact, but it's not like it never went for sale kind of thing. It was like, you know, someone actually fixed it. And, um, the uh, the immortal John Hancock did a video on uh, I think it was on his homebrews. He was doing Atari homebrews, and he talked about, he talked about that. And he had a cartridge where it was a fixed version. And it was uh, NTSC, not PAL. But I think it's rare. It's hard to find or something like that. It's expensive. I believe I have to fight this jackass scene. Oh. Knocking me out! Okay, come on. Focus! Okay, I just have to survive four more seconds. I can do this! Oh no! Oh, sorry. I think I uh, just calculated the time there. I thought I was at three minutes. Crap. Oh. Oh. I lost. It's over. Hmm. You know, I used to have um. I used to have the code for Mike Tyson to actually fight Mike Tyson. Uh, does anybody have that for any chance? That'd be fun to try. Someone can hit the Google there and find the code for me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll fight Mike Tyson. I'm not afraid. Just give you guys a minute there. If somebody wants to hit the Google, give me the code. I remember it was like uh, seven something blah 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 blah. Final boss music was saying when he was a kid, his parents thought it was so funny how they laugh at you. Yes, they taunted you. Oh, it looks like so. Oh, Rex Warden got me the code. Let's give it a shot. Oh, oops. That's the wrong code. Crap. I don't want to fight this guy. <laughs> oh, well. I forgot to actually put the code in for you. I wanted to actually put in Mike Tyson. You know what? I'll just reset the game. Reset buttons are good. Okay, let's see. So, zero, zero, five. Oh, I'm about to take a pummeling. Seven, three, seven, five, four, two, three. <laughs> this is gonna be fine. Hey, that's not it. Ah, oh, did I put in the wrong one? I put in the wrong one, didn't I? <laughs> ah. Blah. Let's try again. Come on, let's do this. I lost 
lost it there. Got two codes here. There it is. It's the 007. Okay. Is that the one? Or is that the same one I just put in? <laughs> Three, seven, three. I don't remember. Is this the one I just put in? Twin codes! Twin codes! Oh yeah! Here we go. Alright, I'm not nervous. Am I nervous? No, I'm, I'm not nervous. Not nervous at all. Okay, I'm nervous. I haven't beat this guy in so long. <laughs> oh, hey, James Campbell's here. How's it going, James? He's at work on a 10 minute break. Well, hopefully, I can make your 10 minutes fun. Let's do this. Guarantee you, I won't last 10 minutes with Mike Tyson. <laughs> Get ready for an intense ass whooping. Yep. I don't think I'll be. Not with this controller either. Yeah. It's like one hit, you're down. That's the end of it. Wow. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! No excuses! Oh my goodness, he won't even get up! Yeah, the leg will get me killed. I, I've heard of this. Um, because I'm using an emulator, unfortunately the leg kills you. <laughs> Give up, retire, yeah. Oh, I used to love I used to love going into the bookstores, and uh, oh, I gotta find the code again. I used to love going into the bookstores and reading up on some of the code books for the uh, Nintendo games, especially Super Mario Brothers Three. You just kind of like read it up, read it up in the store, and be like, "Oh, that's how you do that." Okay. You don't need those anymore. We have the internet. Kind of like the Nintendo Power magazines. Ah, okay. Let's try this one more time. It's all about getting past this first round of friggin' uppercuts. Do this! Blake Smooth! Blake Smooth! No. Oh. Nope. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Not with this crummy controller. This one. It's not possible. Not possible. Not possible. I can't do this. Well. It. The final boss music, you're asking, have I tried Super Punch him? Yes, I have. I remember practicing for hours. Hours I able to beat the last few guys. I never beat it. I used to be able to beat Punch him. I used to be able to beat this. And, uh, it's been a long time. You know, there's a lot of Nintendo games I used to be able to beat. I used to be able to beat this one. I used to be able to beat, um, I used to be able to beat, uh, Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I need to give that another shot. I need to uh, try it again because it's been a long time since I played it and everybody keeps going on about how hard it is and I used to be able to beat it, so I don't know. Probably not anymore. Uh, what else have I beaten? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, I'll punch you till you love <laughs> me. I'll punch you till you love me. Yeah, that's it. It's a good one. Uh, what else have I beaten? I've never beaten Super Punch It, though. No, never. Um, I've beaten Castlevania 2 and 3, obviously 2. Well, I think everybody's beaten 2, or most people can. Uh, 3 was a challenge. I remember, and 3, Castlevania 3, you could beat it uh, with all the different characters. Um, I think I beat it with the Hunchback guy and, what's her name, Sypha? Sypha? Whatever the, the, the woman is with the blue cloak. Uh, I've beaten Castlevania 3 like that. 
Team Fiend Ninja Turtles isn't so much hard as a tedious grind. That's true, yeah. Once you learn the weapons that you need for certain levels, I mean, to get through that last part, uh, just before the Technodrome, you need that scroll weapon. Uh, Battletoads? No, don't even go there. <laughs> Uh, I th honestly, I think Battletoads was the only game that I've actually really thrown the controller and gotten angry. I mean, th that just got your blood going. And I, I might have rented it or borrowed it from a friend. I, I can't remember. And I, I probably rented it. And I was like, why would anybody make such a stupid game? I mean, Battletoads is, is just stupid hard. So <laughs> I don't I don't want to ever play that. Ah, so uh, James has got to go. Thanks for uh, dropping in, James. So uh, maybe you'll catch the uh, the full thing later on when you have some cha uh, chance to uh, uh, when you get home. Anyways, yeah. So uh, that was me. That was this has uh, been my first stream trying it on a different um, platform. I was using OBS this time. In the past, I was only streaming using uh, Google Hangouts, and my stream quality was crap. And so I've had a few people actually give me some advice. And uh, this has actually turned out to be a pretty good stream from what I see from the chat. Sorry about my voice. I think because I'm using the uh, microphone on my webcam. I mean, it's a HD 1080p Logitech web. Good webcam, but the uh, 